Welcome to another edition of Grove 911. I'm Officer Mike Vandervoort. Officer Katie Phillips. We are inside because unfortunately it's starting to get cold outside. Yeah, way we're too just, cold outside. We were just talking about that tomorrow. I think the high temperature is supposed to be 25. And so it's only November. So it begins. But uh, we're here at the Cottage Grove Police Department because we just don't want to be outside. Um, probably a little less scary than last month's show. Uh, right? You looked a little uncomfortable. That, Way uncomfortable. Okay. Will you be there next year or are you going to we'll call see. sick? We'll see. I might call in sick. Okay. not going to lie. <laughs> right. We don't have a ton to talk about this month, but we're going to prepare for next month's show, which we probably have Christmas. some special. Yeah, you like that one. Ah, it's my favorite. Are you going to dress up like a I little might. elf or yeah, something? Yeah, or Santa. Um, Santa or Mrs. Claus. Mrs. Or Claus. Who else is on there? Uh, we, we did some dress up one time. I, can't, oh, I dressed up like a reindeer. I don't know, I even know what I did, but it was... Uh, Ivy had a... Uh, Actual yes, they reindeer had, they had last reindeer week. and Santa Claus, and they were huge. Yeah. They were huge. Like, uh, I'm glad none of them they're got cute, out into though. the road. Everyone's and like, they're just deer, and I'm like, they're cute. They have little fuzzy Yeah, they're fuzzy, cute until they hit animals. the side of your car. Well, reindeer right. aren't going to do that. Actual they fly. Deer they fly. Yeah, they, they fly. Yeah, they'll go over your car. Right. So, around the moon. Um, I feel a little foggy today, so I kind of have a little... Uh, allergies. No, it's not allergies. It's It's... An ice block out there. There's That's no true. allergies, um, but I think it's starting to get a little dry. You know, your skin kind of starts yep. to get that winter feel to it, and maybe that's a little TMI. But we have some good stuff on here. We have some really good stuff uh -huh. coming up in the middle part. <laughs> pretty, pretty uh, VIP stuff coming on here, right? Unbelievable. <laughs> Unbelievable, right? <laughs> but uh, we've had many faces on our on our show, some police, and now we got some fire. So yeah, we got a firefighter. Um, it's April Warner. She has served with the Cottage Grove Fire Department since 1997, and she's actually the longest lasting female firefighter that we have in history. Yeah, 20 years. She started a uh, short time after I did, and uh, it's 20 years goes by fast. So when you have 20 years in, what year will it be? I don't, I can't even count 2036? Something like that. 2036. <laughs> it's going to be way in the future, yeah, yeah. so we'll see I, about I, that. I don't know if I'll still be here, but <laughs> I hope, I wish you well. <laughs> I wish That's you well. Funny. But uh, yeah, April Warner, yeah, 20 years. She, that's uh, she did a little segment. It's kind of like our city faces. We've been trying to go out into at least our workforce or even the fire department and people that work around Cottage Grove, and we get to know them a little bit right. better outside of work. So let's toss it to April Warner and see what she has to say. For 20 years, April Warner has served as a firefighter for the city of Cottage Grove. What drove me to become a firefighter is actually growing up in the community. Being able to be there at people's worst and trying to make a difference. Joining the fire department seemed to be the right thing at the right time. 3140 station receives a call. When I first started the fire service, I had no clue what I was getting into. I grew up with three sisters in the family. You know, we were always arguing about clothes, what we were gonna wear, taking each other's makeup. When I joined the fire department, it was totally different. In 1997, April began her journey as a firefighter for the city. Some of the obstacles on the fire service, it was trying to fit in with some of the people that have been on the department for a long time. It was proving myself to them because I had to show myself worthy back then, especially being a female firefighter as well. Despite April's challenges, there were several firefighters that made a real difference in her career those firefighters, my brothers so-called, they kind of stepped up and helped that process along. And if I ever had any problems, it was easier for me to talk to somebody. Proving yourself to them, but would you say you're also trying to prove something to yourself? Too? Exactly. People didn't expect young females to join the fire department. So I had to gain the trust of myself as well. So it was just gaining the confidence and also going above and beyond to make sure that I could be the best firefighter there was. The first fire call that I went on was actually Thanksgiving Day. Things that were rolling in my mind is like, did I grab all my equipment? Do I have everything on the right spot? The most intense feeling is actually when you first go into a fire, knowing whether the fire is upstairs or downstairs and how intense the fire is and what heat intensity is there. After your first fire, how did that affect your confidence? You know, every time you put on that gear, um, you're challenging yourself. You get better each and every time that you do that. 
being on the fire service, you go through a lot of traumatic events. And when those happen, you always have to have someone there to be by your side and be able to go through those feelings together. And the only way you can go through those feelings is with somebody that was there. So that also gave us a bond to be more like a, like a family, like a brotherhood, a sisterhood, per se. And every once in a while you get that one person come up to you and say, hey, I remember you, you were on that call when my grandma passed away or when something happened to my family member. It was that one person that just came up to you and, and kind of touched you, knowing that there's people out there that need this service and it just drives you to continue to want to do your job. What led to your decision to finally retire? I had to really sit down and think, now that I've been here for 20 years, where do I see myself in the next five years? So what better time than now to, to go back and finish my degree and continue my career in EMS and successfully choose to do that as a career full time. Nobody else in the history of College Grove Fire Department can ever be the first female firefighter to retire after 20 years. Nobody. And that's something that she has. How many people in our organization make it to 20 years? Less than 5% of us as a whole make it 20 years or more. As far as females go, it's even less than 1%. That's amazing. It's, it's, what she has endured in our organization coming up and, and fighting through the struggles and stuff like that is, is I, I don't know how, how else to say it. Um, she has the biggest heart out of anybody in our organization. You think about what she has given to this organization without ever saying, look at me, I'm April. Look at me, look what I've done. Look what I'm doing for everybody else. It has never been about April, ever. It's always been about what her heart is and what she feels for our organization and what she wants to do for our organization. On November 1st, 2017, April Warner retired as the longest serving female firefighter in the city of Cottage Grove. It's something that I've done for 20 years that I'm not gonna easily forget. There's so many memories, so many good times, um, so many people that I helped out. I think being a firefighter has made me more compassionate. It's embracing your family and your friends and having life and fulfilling it to the best of what you want in your life. I would just like to say thanks for giving me the opportunity to serve the, the community of Cottage Grove and I wish everybody a safe and healthy life and best wishes for a new future for everybody. Thanks April for that segment. Yeah, that's uh, 20 years goes by fast. It's uh, you'll blink your eyes and you'll be you'll be like chief here someday or something. Yeah. No? No, no thanks. No. Uh -uh. Okay, well, I just like being on the street. Yeah, okay. Well, <laughs> speaking of you being on the street, mm -hmm. <laughs> I guess this next part we're going to talk about actually involves some of our producers spending some time with you. Yeah, they did a ride along with me. How was it? Was, was it, was, it, a it was fun, but there's like cameras kind of set up everywhere. Did they have so little GoPros set up. Yeah, and stuff? right, right, like in my face. There's a GoPro, <laughs> but it was kind of fun. We didn't. It was it was a pretty slow day, but that's was, what always was it, happens was it when we have a rider. Out? Yeah, it was a little bit warmer out yet, oh. so. I get kind of, you know, it starts getting cold out. So, you know, I start getting. That's at 20 years on. Yeah, I know. It's my, my collarbone seems like a little. Oh my god. It seems a little. You, know, you ever land on your arm, mm -hmm. on your side a little bit, and sometimes Very funny. it's just really hard to throw a football. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but oh, that, that's, oh. I, I don't know if you. <laughs> I knew saw. exactly where you were going with that. Oh. The Packers. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, my hometown. Yeah, the, the Packers. I'm doing so hot right now. Yeah, so. they had a little bit of a setback. I think uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Rogers ran into a bar. Ah, I get it, eh, Anthony Barr. Eh, eh, eh. Okay. Well, hopefully he'll be back by the end of the season. It's, it's unfortunate yeah. to see. Uh, uh, you don't want to see him get hurt. I no, mean, you don't want to see him get hurt. Granted, our friendly rivalry between but like, it's, it's, Packers. It's, it's a lot more. Don't it's it's fun to watch good players. You know, it's like you kind of like want to want to beat the good ones. You Do know? you want to even know some sweet personal information that sure. I have, especially dealing with the Packers? So. When I was in college, I played rugby, right? Wow, I've, I wouldn't even know where to begin with that. Yeah, so didn't play very long because I blew up my knee. So tore the ACL, MCL, meniscus. And guess who did my surgery back in Green Bay? Uh, Sharon Rogers, or Aaron Rogers. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the Packers doctor. Oh, really? So, yeah, that's why my knee is perfect. 
perfect. Like 101% even better than before I blew wow. it up. Wow. So, yeah, that's a little information. That now that you're picking on the Packers. <laughs> was that uh, your last rugby? <laughs> yeah, Is it was your, absolutely Your career done. ended? Pretty much everything was done after that because I knew I wanted to come into law enforcement and I, I couldn't afford to get hurt. So. <laughs> well, we like to tease Katie and her uh, her Packer hometown, but it's all in, in good good fun. As you can see behind us, we actually have one of the officers has a uh, cheese head police hat. Maybe we'll have to have her wear that before the show is over. But um, speaking of Katie, she has uh, obviously spent some time with our producers and they brought a bunch of cameras and now we're going to show you what it's like to ride along with the one and only Katie Phillips. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, bud. Good morning. Good morning. I love Cottage Grove. The management here and the people here are great. They're amazing. They have our backs. It's kind of like a family and I can really say that because they actually care about us and they care about what we do and we don't need praise for the things we do because we're cops. But it's nice sometimes and it's nice to feel appreciated and yeah, everyone that I work with is great. It's fun, it's busier, it's bigger. Uh, time's flying by. So we'll drive around and we'll look at areas that people have been complaining about with speeders and kind of crack down show our presence in the area. Can't be everywhere at once, but we do what we can. I came in as a, a lateral, so I mean, I have some experience. I didn't start from the bottom up, but sometimes it's harder studying statutes and doing things different, and as well as a different department. So that aspect was challenging. Then it has all your information, then you guys can uh, take off from there, okay? But they hired you for a reason, so they don't wanna hire you, get you through the process, and try and weed you out. Here, it's just they do everything in their power to make you succeed. They both have insurance, both valid drivers. I'll give them a form instead of them sitting out in this wind and cold, writing down each other's information. I'll just do it on a report. It's hard to explain a profession that you really have a passion for, like this one. So it's hard to say, oh, why you got into this profession or what made you. I don't have any law enforcement in my family. I truly believe God put me on this earth to be a cop. The excitement I get from this job and the fact that I couldn't think of anything else I'd rather do. Do you have any questions for me? No, thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Uh, you as well. Place your seatbelts on and drive safe, okay? I like being there when, it's, when someone's the most vulnerable that they are in the time that they need you most. I like being there for that. That is a part of my job that I really enjoy. Either way, you're good to go. Um, drive safe. Do you have any questions for me? No, I don't. All right, you're free to leave. Being there when someone's at their, it could be the worst day of their life or delivering a notification that isn't awesome, but being there for someone and being that person and trying to help them out and that's what I like this job. How's it going, Tom? Good, how are you? Yeah? You ready for school today? Yeah. <laughs> you can. Good morning. Good morning. All right, thanks, Katie. Well, it was fun. Yeah, it was fun, right? Yeah, maybe we'll have yeah. them come ride on night shift next year. That's, yeah. that's my go to. But no, it was a good time. Thanks for riding with us, producers behind the cameras. Yeah, maybe it's fun. We'll, you'll have many more opportunities. Now you just yeah. gotta get some people on your crew to kind of. No, it was funny because they were riding, or he was riding. Yep. And um, I even would back some people up on traffic stops, and they're like, "I'm good." <laughs> and I'm like recorded. Yeah, and they're like, "Can you please leave?" <laughs> so none of them like to. Yeah, be we on. have some officers who are a little camera shy here. Very but camera I, shy. I had to uh, talk Katie into coming on the show about a year that ago, is true. so. Um, yeah. We'll talk about it some other time, but uh, no, it was a uh, it was a great time. So, but uh, this this now brings us to the cooking portion of our show. You can see that we're in the uh, Cottage Grove kitchen. kitchen. Uh, today we're gonna make some fondue. No, wait, I don't know what, what could we make in here. Nothing. I'm not Nothing. a baker. I think there's some uh, croutons. Um, I think, some bread that was already I brought think, in. Uh, we could make that. I think Captain Kerner took the last donut. <laughs> so. He wanted to be on the show. You know he did. Yeah. But uh, he right. he left prior to us. Well, we talked about it being back on. colder outside and it's the holidays cold coming up and people doing a lot of cooking 
Um, if, if it's anything like my oven, you know, I, 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 I so overdo and clean out my oven. It's, uh, I need to hit that little clean button. Yep. I just yeah. stick a little tray underneath on the bottom. So it's a metal tray, so it catches all the stuff. So my oven doesn't start on fire, and I'm yeah. good well, to go. Well, I, I have, cleanup. I have some. Uh, I have a, we have a teenager in our house that likes to throw the frozen pizza on there. So, yep. like, some of the cheese falls off, and then it just kind of becomes this smoke alarms go off in the house, and it's just chaos. But um, I think uh, Chief Rick Redinas talks about. Fire Talks safety. about fire safety. It's important stuff. Obviously, we're going to be closing up shop for the winter. Yeah, you can't go outside and grill. I mean, you can, but... You can, but... Uh, I know some people do that deep-fried turkey, and that's dangerous. I've seen that stuff. Yeah. It's, I've never had one, but uh, we've we've had a couple houses kind of just... It's like 50-50. Like, if yeah. you're good at it, go for it, but yeah, if not, but just don't, don't do it. Just <laughs> don't do it in your bathroom, okay? Because that's, you know, do it away from the house, so... But uh, um, let's throw it to uh, Chief Rick Redinas for this month's uh, fire safety. Hello everyone, I'm Fire Chief Rick Redinas. Fire safety is a year-round concern, but most fires happen in the fall and winter season. Here's a roundup of fire safety tips to keep your family safe and sound during the colder months. First thing to do each fall is to change the batteries in your smoke and carbon monoxide alarms. Be sure there are working smoke alarms on each floor of your home notably outside of the sleeping areas. Carbon monoxide detectors are required to be installed within 10 feet of any bedroom. This includes multiple bedrooms in multiple level homes. It is also a good idea to verify that all fire extinguishers in your home are fully charged and in working order. Install fire extinguishers near exits and check them periodically according to manufacturer's specifications. Make sure to get your chimney inspected each fall Use fireplace screens to keep sparks and fire debris inside your fireplace. For natural gas fireplaces, get all connections and lines inspected before use each season. Another task is to check the placement of your electric heaters. All types must be kept at least 36 inches away from anything that can burn. Space heaters must not be left operated when you are not in the room. We also ask residents to adopt a hydrant during the winter. When you adopt a hydrant, you make sure that snow does not build up around and cover a fire hydrant. When this happens, it can slow down the ability of a firefighter to access a water supply quickly in the event of a house fire. Holiday season is peak time for cooking fires. On Thanksgiving, make sure to stay in the kitchen when you're cooking so you can keep an eye on the food. Make sure to have a lid nearby to smother small grease fires. Smother the fire by sliding the lid over the pan and then turning off the stovetop. Leave the pan covered until it is completely cool. During the holiday season, remember to turn off Christmas lights before leaving home or going to sleep. And do not overload electrical circuits or extension cords. That's all we have for this month's public safety update. If you have a fire safety question or a question about the fire department, you can email me directly. And if you'd like to stay up to date on what's happening with the department, you can do so by going to the Fire Department EMS Facebook page. Thanks for watching, and have a safe and happy holiday season. All right, thanks, Chief Rodinas, for those awesome updates. Hey, we're, we're taking a little break here, play some ping pong. Are, are you a good ping ponger? Uh, I would consider myself I mean, myself you go from okay. rugby to ping pong. Yeah, so. uh, Officer Hensler here and I, we... Yeah. Uh, He's over there on the other side Actually, of the table. He already um, lost me once. Actually, that's a lie. He already beat me once. But we have, we have. You'll see, and we'll, we won't uh, spend too much time on this today. But we have a new officer across the table, and officer this is Luke part of Langraf. That's right, Luke Langraf started this week. This is part of his uh, initiation. Uh, yeah, uh, like field training program. Yep. You know, you know, like initiation. What you have in your head. This is his. Like yep. he's got to beat us to. He's got to beat us and move on to the next phase. next phase of yeah. of his training. So, hey, easy. <laughs> but uh, another another quick show next month. I'm guessing we'll have some visitors. You never know. Who? I don't know. Reindeer. Reindeer. Elves. North North Pole. I just like to um, smile. Smiling. Residents. Is my favorite. Yeah. So. All right. Well, let's uh, let's take. Happy that. Thanksgiving. So That's right. So hopefully this plays before it. That's right. What um, do you have? Any good uh, Thanksgiving? I'm plans? actually working. I'm I'm, I'm working too. Time. Yeah. Good let's times. have some turkey. All right. Good times. Nothing Mashed will be. Potatoes. Nothing will be open. That'll be great. Hey, no. See this line? 
This line <laughs> clearly says this is my side of the ping pong table. See? So that one's mine. I'm going to hit this See? one to Luke. Way to go, Luke. Good job, buddy. Luke, I am your f mother. I don't know how that is, but uh, um, we're going to keep playing some ping pong here. It's getting pretty crazy. We're really good. But uh, ooh. Ooh, I don't know what that, I don't know what they call that. But. <laughs> wow. I know we're kind of getting off on a, on a tangent here, and if you're still watching the show and haven't moved on to more educational things instead of watching uh, your police department play ping pong, um, tune in next month. And uh, until next month, be safe. Be safe. Look at that. I don't even know if that's legal. This is this is new uh, new hire engagement. Oh, I was totally going for that corner. Oh, I almost laid oh. out for that. Oh, you see that spin? <laughs> got it. Luke's got this, like, he puts this little shade I know, on. I don't like playing with him, actually. I'm just gonna take oh, look at that. They don't get any better than that. Paddle high five. Woo! We might as well just end it here, so. Way to go, Luke. You just made your first appearance.